like they have sustainability, right? It's not about green, or, you know, I don't, like, I don't like the term green because it's so broad, like, you know? But how long the material is sustainable for, like, you know, during its life cycle? Now, there's another one as well, post-occupancy as well, we call it EDIM. And there's another one as well, that I have arguments about, so I won't tell you about that one. But it's developing anyway, though, you know? Um, and I, even now, um, they're talking about other of these as well, where um, some train stations, for example, uh, they have, you know, they look at the pattern flow of people on the five o'clock tube, or, you know, give them a bus down from Tala to Townwood, you know, and they look at all of people's, how they work like, and I, they do that in BIM as well, like, you know, so the whole, so a 3D model, you know, you can do all, you can do so much with it, like, you know, but obviously that's, that's you know, the post-occupancy stage, you know. Um, now this is just a simple, very, very simple, um, <laughs> So what is, back to what is the life, lifetime of a typical BIM model? All right. So, so answer is the BIM model is a lifetime in digital format. Okay, it's, it's digital, and it's got information in there as well. So you can do document management. You can also have all the information you need, like you know, it can be as well, revised. Um, so, like a building has a lifetime in reality from conception to demolition. So, here's say day zero, year day one zero. Start off there. Three years to build a normal project, like you know, some buildings you could build in 18 months, like you know. Um, around about three years, I say engineering, procurement, construction, and then handover. That line there means handover, okay? And you have 37 years there, <coughs> going on, right? And that's that, that is where life cycle is, okay? And it's very simple, then. very, very simple, because all it is is taking the information this stage here, the 40 stage, and looking at the, and looking at the sustainability and when you have to maintain in time that 3D object. It's very simple, very, very simple. So BIM is, you know, BIM is going to offer a lot of things, open up a lot of doors. Um, what do you think so far? What do you think about dissertation topics? <laughs> if anybody can tackle this one here, right? That one there, 7D, yeah? I think it's a brilliant one, you know? and you, you, you know, I think, I think, if you go to the presentation, don't put in there what is building information model, or, you know, it has to be a bit more than that one, you know? but I think, you know, that one there, this asset management stage, like, you know, is a good, is a good one. I mean, over in here, I mean, we, the American score is IPD stage, like, you know, okay, the integrated project new stage. You can have so many in there as well, on the 5D stage, like, you know, of BIM as well. So, you know, um, once you uh, yeah, start brainstorming this sort of stuff, I mean, I, I actually think it could be OEM, there's going to be a lot of consultants spring up, to be honest, you know, because the, the knowledge is in there at the moment. It's time for you guys, you know, you're the brain you know, you can work there and do it all right, you know? So, you know, so that, that's that's bit, so I want to just get a point across there about a digital model in a building as well, they're both exactly the same. <coughs> now, integrated project delivery, you already just come up time and time again. Um, basically, IPD, right, is collaborative, okay? And when I say collaborative, it means this thing about silos, okay? All the silos are demolished, right? There's no silos. Architects, <coughs> engineers, contractors, they're all integrated together to deliver the project. That's pretty much what it means, all right? But to let that happen, though, we have to have a, we have to have a change in contracts. Going back 20 minutes ago, about contracts, all right? Because contracts don't work in this project. <coughs> and it don't work for my country either. There's only one at the moment called the AI, AIA multi-party contract. Look it up on the internet, yeah? Because that type of contract will become used more and more on BIM projects. Right? So if anybody does the AIA distinction and compare it against GCCC, I'd love to see that one, actually. Um, so, integrated project delivery is a collaborative alliance of people, systems, business structures, and practices, okay? So we're, we're, we're planning divisions, we'll bring it all together. It's just a process, okay, very important, that harnesses the talents and insights of all participants to optimize project results. Increase value to the owner, reduce waste, all right, you all know about reducing waste, reducing risk as well, variations. Do you know what variation is? They blight the industry, all right, they like the zits in their face, all right? Variations, we want to get rid of them as well, right? Good for the contractor, yeah. I need to say that. Uh, increase value to the owner. That's what he wants, right? We have to increase value to the owner, right? Because most projects um, have 
a lot of variations like you know he wants value all right and he wants to look better as well all right we have to look better i mean we're not respected i mean i mean you know back in my country when brunel was building we were very much respected but not anymore then no respect for building whatsoever reduce waste maximize efficiency all right through all phases of design fabrication and construction all right design procure construct all right remember that design procure construct Right. <coughs> the IPD stage of a project is only around three to four years of a project life where it was built. All right. Um, this is design, procure, construct, and commissioning as well. The remainder of lifetime of the project is the asset manager stage, which is the seventh dimension. All right. Current forms of contract do not take account of this. Answer of a multi-party form of contract. Right. So that's that's what you need to get into. Like, and I think that's a really good day. Um, this station topic actually, the multi-party form of contract. And sort of what I think you could actually do, like, you know, and they, um, you know, present to a lot of people because a lot of people would be interested in that. You know, there's a lot of function, there's a lot of focus on BIM as a software at the moment, and it's not software. It's about the process and the people involved as well. Okay, so just going, just going to basics now, right? Basic mode. Um, 3D objects, right? I talked about 3D objects before. Column, yeah. Based on car park. All right. So. A 3D object. So when Malachi Matthews upstairs, he does his 3D models, okay? He creates loads and loads and loads and loads of 3D objects. It's a bit like Lego, all right? Okay, so that, that Lego man. And they, uh, so basically, a 3D object, right, could be a column, all right? I did that on Google SketchUp, all right? Very simple. Did it in Google SketchUp. Um, <coughs> a 3D object, right, digitally, in real life, has quantities, dimensions, Learner's information and calculation and specification, yeah? All right, that's formal around there as well. Okay? And a 3D object also has quantities, okay? And we will sketch up dimensions, learner's information and calculations, specification, and costs. All right, we've got costs in there as well. We have to build it, like, you know? All right? 3Ms, men, machine, men, materials, machinery, fuel together. Uh, all right, so you have to remember the cost, how to build that as well. So Malik and Matthew's upstairs, right? He's doing all his nice, fancy architecture boring, his, you know, I wish Malik was here actually. <laughs> doing all his uh, uh, 3D stuff, right? And they, um, you guys, right, this is where 5D comes in. You're the quantity surveyors, you have to price that column up, right? Okay? Very interesting because you have to look at temporary works. Tell me how you price that column up. Any answers? <coughs> I go on. Yeah. Huh? That's it. Yeah. You start with that, didn't you? So you need men, right? You need resources. Okay? You need, you need a tariff, right? All right? What else do you need? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. What else? There's a whispering going on. I can hear it. Go on. There you go. Yeah, shut it. So, the three M's, right? And that's, that's the thing. That's what 5D is like, you know? <coughs> Time, cost, and quality. All right, back to the basis of project management again. All right, so always keeps coming back to time, cost, and quality. All right, then Malachi Matthews do the quality. We also have to do the quality also as well. All right, so that's that. Simple stuff. The important part is that, like, yeah, or do you do create a you know, to use in Revit, do you know, like, oh, yeah. Those are the decisions, I mean, if they're too deep, I can't even progress. You know more than me, then. Huh? You know more than me, then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just wondering, like, well, I obviously haven't used Revit, but how. Like, what are you inputting when you're making a 3D model? Yeah. Like, you know, I know the box jumps up yeah. and I haven't got into it. Right. Right. I'm not an architect, you know? All right? But I'd like to know a bit about it. I one day I will go on the Revit course, okay? <laughs> but I know that with build information modeling, it's the eye, the information which goes in. So when you click on that there, yeah? On that, on that 3D object, okay? It's a column, all right? If it's a double eye column, we do it in two pores, possibly, all right? But in there, you're going to have your rebar. So the structural engineer, he, he looks at the, the strength of the rebar, okay? And what happens is that the architect basically gives him the model, right? And he looks at all the loading calculations on the floors as well. So if you look at the precast, if you're looking at in situ or steel or anything like that, like, you know? And all that information is stored digitally in that 3D object. And you have to use that as well, as it? Right? Curing times as well. Very important one, you know? Curing times. Why would, why would curing be important on a, on a, on a flat slab? Well, as you go up there, I mean, like obviously, yeah. you know, the quicker you get the property cured, the more you exactly. get the next time you get to that one. Yeah, that's and it. And that's, and that's, go, yeah. that's it, yeah. And that's, and that, exactly, and that's time cost and quality again, yeah. Alright, so the architect, you'd, you'd always do this, you know, in 3D, like, you know, always build in 3D, right? 
and they put his information in there, but you have to extract that information. Different tools are doing that. which has got one at the moment called Cosmos, all right, where you can take in 3D objects right, and cost them up. All right? Now, to cost it, um, you use your own database, right, or you can use what we call the SPONS, they use UK, Ireland as well, and they use, always use uh, Richardson's? Means. RS means? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can use this as well, though, you know? And that's it, like, you know? And that's how you cost it up, though. Like. All right? You ain't going to do it for you. You have to do it, like, you know? But the thing is, this, the thing is, though, once he designs that on the screen, you have to cost it up, right? Now, there's, there's two scenarios now it's going to get costed up. Tender, a, ten, a competitive tender stage, right? So you get there's one 3D model and you price it up, right? Or, because you're, you're, you're a, a switched on BIM man, with a BLM contractor, you do it at the very early stages, okay? Where the, where the design team and the contractor are in together. That's called the multi party contract. So, All right. so you have, I mean, in a sense, you have one master drawn, that have to go, and like obviously traverse yeah. between, between obviously a different, so, you know, different track or your different yeah. aspects, so to speak. Yeah. So you have to rely on the structural engineer or someone not to make a pause of that bottle and That's it. screw oh, yeah. it all up and yeah. then give it back to you. That's you it. Got, yeah. If you're the architect, you've got this person drawn, you've got yeah. to try and sort it out. Yeah. Because he's in, so, you have to kind of, you have to kind of work together. Like. You do, like, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. Like, I don't mean like we're talking about this. Yeah, come from. And, the, and the thing, the thing as well, value engineering. I mean, when you're a builder, right? You're building on site. You're not going to like it's come back to constructability again. Yeah. You know, my background is planning engineering, right? And I've done a few projects around Ireland, like, you know, different ones, and a few in the UK as well. And but other than that, like, you know, I mean, whenever I took a, I can never work on a bit of quantities because a bit of quantities meant nothing to me. And it still goes back to the drawer and, draw and calculate concrete and says, right, okay, we've got a big basement here, right, more set 100 meters by 50 meters, we need to divide the pores. Architect didn't do that for you. He didn't go anywhere near it. He doesn't even think about doing that. And you're going to have to look at the procurement net of the rebar, all right, how it all ties in. And then you go look at the, you know, doing your checker like right that. So, yeah. So, you know, that's, I'm, I'm glad we're having this conversation like that. Any other questions? So does BIM just continue that on with that, Matthew? What you're saying there yeah. is that BIM works effectively when you have integration of disciplines. Yeah. Uh, where you don't have an integration of disciplines, BIM is very handy for the contractor because yeah. it exposes errors made by the design right. team. Yeah. Sorry, I'm speaking as a contractor on the same point of view. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the thing is as well, there's um, a case in America where that's happening there. Right. Yeah, and actually, and, some, and actually, what, what's happened as well? Some contractors, contractors are driving this. Contractors have taken the two D drawings, <coughs> taken the uh, jacket off, start to sweat. Just need a little five minutes. Um, and basically, what, what happens is that with the um, with your contractors now in America, what they're doing, they're taking up. I was talking about this today. Most of the time, they're taking up all of the um, the graduates in architecture, and they're using them because what they're doing is they're tendering, they, they're taking two D drawings. And they turn into 3D models, and then they go back to the client. Well, it's the client, yeah. That's what they call. Um, <laughs> I think you know, something not right here, right? You know, because there's so many clashes, right? Why is why is the stairs there on a structural engineer's drawer, and why is it there in an architect's drawer, all right? So, you know, contractors are driving it, and contractors are driving it in this country as well, not clients. All right, so that's 3D objects, all right? <coughs> um, so a BIM model can be made up of multiple 3D objects, okay, to create a 3D model. All right, so there's a set of columns there. All right, so you have to look at men, machine, and materials. Back to costs again. So now we come to this thing which is coming into the industry now, called 4D, right? 4D BIM. A lot of tenders now are asking for 4D scenarios, a tender stage, and also a lot of contractors provide them, but are also saying as well. Oh, it's only for tender. That's not BIM. You know? Okay, so I'll show you something in a minute anyway, which, which, uh, which goes into that. We'll look at a few videos. So a BIM model can be made up of multiple 3D objects to create a 3D model. These can be interlinked with activities of a GAN chart, and costs for permanent and consumable resources can be applied, right? Permanent, permanent, then machinery, consumable materials, right? Okay, so what happens, right, in 4D? Basically, yeah, it doesn't matter what software you look at. What happens is that as you go on chart, all right, that could be a, a you know, basement again. These are our four columns. They are those 3D objects 
and linked back to the Gantt chart. Right. Now you're going to say to yourself, well, what's the big deal there? Like, what happens, and I'll show a bit of software later, we're going to think called a focus time. Right? And 